Back in the 1960s, when doctors first started doing heart transplants, it didn't take long before they noticed something strange. People sometimes would come back in and they would report strange things, like their taste in music or food or sports had totally changed. Or sometimes they would have memories of being in places they never in their life had ever visited, right? And when they connected these people with the family of the heart donor, inevitably they would find out things like, well, yes, our son played baseball. Maybe that's why you love baseball now. You didn't love it before. Or, oh, yeah, our daughter visited Rome every year. It was her favorite city in the world. And now you say that you have memories of being in Rome, and yet you never in your life have ever been there? So those must be her memories? How weird is that? The ancients believed that the heart was the seat of the soul and the source of love and creativity and romance and the center and the core of our being. Now, in the West, we've never given any credence to those old ideas. We've only looked at the heart as a muscle, really. In fact, it wasn't until the 1970s that doctors discovered that there was a little brain in the heart, gray matter, white matter in the heart. And they found that most of the messages between the brain and the heart are actually not going from the brain to the heart. They're going from the heart to the brain, indicating that the brain in our heads is obeying the messages that are being sent by the brain that is in our hearts. 